Roshana Chosky is the author of the Instant New York Times best-selling first book in the Pandava series, Arusha in the End of Time and its four sequels. Well, now the fifth and final installment, Arusha in the Nectar of Immortality, shines with the strength of sisterhood in South Asian representation, and it will be released tomorrow. to talk about this wonderful, exciting, and final book in the series is Roshana Chosky. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. Now, um, first, you are perhaps best known for your Indian influence, young adult and middle grade fantasy novels. Tell us what fostered you to have interest in those cultures and their stories. Uh, well, I was just very much inspired by my family and by the stories that I was exposed to growing up. Um, I'm from Atlanta and I'm from a mixed race home. My father is from India, so because of that I was deeply exposed to Hindu mythology and folklore. And my mother is from the Philippines, which means that I've also just been spoiled for Filipino folklore and Filipino stories and honestly just incredible food on both sides. <laughs> I'll bet. Now, why do you think that inclusivity and representation are important in young adult fiction, especially today? Uh, you know, it's it's like if you can imagine growing up without a mirror, this not having the sense of who you are, what you look like, where you belong, um, not having a sense of comparison between yourself and other people. That's what it's like to grow up without any visible representation in either mainstream media like television or feature film, um, or especially when it comes to stories. I was a huge bookworm and still am, and I've always found it really heartbreaking that when I was growing up, I never saw anybody on the cover of a book who looked like me or my loved ones. I never saw anyone else have a hard to pronounce ethnic name like me. And it can make you feel very uncertain in your own skin. It can make you feel invisible, erased, and it can even make you feel that all those things are happening for a good reason because you don't matter. And to me, that's something at the heart of the Arusha and the End of Time series that I really wanted to push back against and to really celebrate this idea that no matter who you are, no matter where you come from or how you identify, you absolutely deserve to be the hero or heroine of your story. Yes, absolutely. And I love that theme of the book, too, and the whole series as well. Now, I'm um, speaking of the Nectar of Immortality. Um, as we said, it is the conclusion to the Pan of a Quintet. Um, tell us what lessons would you like for readers to learn from Arushal's adventures in this series? Um, you know, one thing that I've always found deeply comforting, even though it's a sort of strange idea, is that throughout a lot of Eastern religions and particularly in, you know, or at least for me particularly, I was exposed to a lot um, in Hinduism. It's this idea of universality. You know, when you're, when you're growing up, I remember the very first time I ever asked myself the question of why do bad things happen to good people? And there's no answer for that. Yeah. And you you turn to religious scripture and you turn to stories and you turn to mythology. And at least that's what ancient people did. They used mythology to explain the questions that they did not have answers for. Um, and one thing that I found particularly comforting, even though it's a little bleak, is the idea that the universe doesn't owe me anything. There, mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't owe me any answers. And there's something about that that then forces you to be strong, to have a strong sense of belief in yourself, in the, the notions, the philosophy, the faith that you ascribe to yourself. Um, and that's something that the Arusha on the End of Time series really celebrates because when I was that age growing up, I turned to stories for that emotional anchor, to be reminded that if my favorite character could go through hell and back, could have all these experiences, could fight demons and monsters and still come out with a smile on their face and feeling a little wiser, a little older, a little bit more weathered, then, then I could do it too. Absolutely. And that is something that is definitely needed 
in these day and times, especially for middle schoolers and young adults to know um, they need to be able to see those examples of being able to overcome adversity and come out on top. So yes, very good um, job with the series and, and whole and thank you for sharing that message in the series. Now, um, speaking of the series itself, um, we know this is the end, but is it really the end? Will we be seeing any of your work on the big screen soon? Well, I, I can say one thing that's very exciting is that actually next week we have the very first Arusha on the End of Time graphic novel coming out. Um, it's been illustrated by Anu Chohan and adapted by Joe Caramagna, who has incredible work throughout the Marvel comic series and things like that. And it's really exciting because I think that's the sort of thing that then makes people curious about other adaptations, other kind of life forms that a book may take. Um, so I'm, I'm really, I'm crossing fingers and toes that it'll make Hollywood take a look. I bet it will. I don't think you're going to need much luck in that area. Definitely. Now, um, tell us lastly, what appeals to you about writing fantasy as a whole? I'm really drawn to writing fantasy because I think that it's a lesson in abstraction, that I can take the thing that I'm scared of the most and perhaps make it into a real monster and then defeat that monster. Um, I'm you know, sort of fudging the quote from G.K. Chesterton, but how it basically goes is uh, the idea of a fairy tale is not to tell children that dragons exist, but that dragons can be defeated. And I very much love that. Yes, that's a great quote. And I love that quote too. And we all need to know that not just young adults, but adults as well, that any dragons or obstacles that come in our life, we can go ahead and defeat them. So thank you for your positivity and your empowerment through this series. And I want to let everyone know that the book is again available tomorrow. You can get it on Amazon, you can get it everywhere books are sold. And um, tell us uh, one last thing, tell us where can people go to get more information on you or to keep up with you across social media and your future projects. Um, well, you can find out more about the things I've written and past interviews and more on my website, www.roshnichakshi.com, or you can find me on Instagram at Roshni Chakshi, where I'm often sharing just photos of my cat and strange things that I think he would be saying and food that I have been eating. So <laughs> if that's of any interest, you can find me there. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks you. Thanks again for joining me today. And um, we wish you the best of luck in the new release tomorrow, as well as your future projects. Thank you for all you've done for our young adults. It's much oh, needed. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it.